Hello and welcome back to Doctor Who, The Cancelled Years. In this video, we'll be covering Season 30 of Doctor Who. So, let's get started. <laughs> season 30 would have been the third season for Richard Griffiths as the Doctor, the last season for Julius Swahala as Rain Cunningham, the first season for Lisa Baumann as Benny Summerfield, the third season for Ian Fraser as producer, and the last season for Ben Aronovich as script editor. Between seasons, a lot changed for Doctor Who. Firstly, due to Alan Yentop taking over as controller of BBC One, the show was moved back to BBC One. Along with this move came a budget increase, which allowed the episode count to be increased from 14 to 20. Now there would be 6 stories per season, with 4 being 3 parts long and 2 being 4 parts long. However, there would be an exception for this season, as you'll soon see why. Season 30 marked the 30th anniversary of Doctor Who. To celebrate this event, Fraser and Aronovich decided to make the 6th episode this season into the show's 30th anniversary special, with it essentially being a 90 minute TV movie. So season 30 would have 16 25 minute episodes and one 90 minute episode, or in other words, 4 three-parters, 1 four-parter and one 90 minute episode. This would be Julius Wahala's final season as Rain Cunningham. Episode 3 would have introduced their new companion named Bernice Summerfield, an archaeologist from the 26th century. For the role of Bernice, actress Lisa Bauman was cast in the role. This season debuted a new title sequence and arrangement of the Doctor Who theme, as well as a new logo. The new theme music would have been done by composer Mark Ayres, who offered a more darker arrangement of the theme, and one that harkened back to the themes done by Delia Derbyshire and Peter Howell. Also, there would have been a new TARDIS exterior, which would have been designed by Mike Tucker. And finally, the 8th Doctor got a slightly new look, with the Doctor now sporting a beard. And now, let's get on with the episodes. The first episode would have been Transit, written by Ben Aronovich. would have been set on Earth in the 22nd century. The story would have saw the Doctor and Rain working with a woman named Kadiatu to stop an entity from another universe entering theirs using the Sol Transit system, which is a big interstellar transport system linked to multiple worlds. The story would have had many fan-pleasing easter eggs, such as the Sol Transit system being created after the failure of Tiamat from the Seeds of Death, a reference to the Ice Warriors and Kadiatu being a descendant of the Brigadier. The second episode would have been the Gallifreyan Election, written by Russell T Davies. This story would have shown the political side to Gallifrey and would have shown how they elect a new president. The two running candidates are Romana and a new time lady named Colleen, who would be portrayed by Joanna Lumley. The story would have saw the Doctor being dragged in by Alila to investigate the election as many believe Colleen to be a fraud who's cheated her way into power. The Doctor in this story would have been in a bit of a grumpy mood, as he doesn't really care for Gallifrey's politics, and as such, he's very annoyed through most of the story. Eventually, they discover that Colleen is cheating to win the election, and they also discover Colleen's secret plans if she wins the election, which concerns the Doctor. If Colleen wins the election, She'll change the policy of the non-interference law and will begin a full-on war with the rest of the universe. The Doctor and Rain with the help of Leela and K9 Mark I are able to expose Colleen's plans to Gallifrey. Colleen is eventually captured and arrested with her being exiled from Gallifrey to a Gallifrey prison camp. When the unrigged votes are counted up, everyone discovers that Romana was in the lead by miles and Colleen was not even close to winning. And so because of that, 
Roman is declared the new president of Gallifrey. And the story ends on Romana's ceremony as she takes on the title of Lord President of Gallifrey. The third episode would have been Love and War, written by Paul Cornell. The story would have been set in the 26th century on a colony world named Heaven, home to both humans and draconians. The Doctor and Rain arrive on Heaven, where the pair make friends with a group called the Travellers. Rain begins to form a bond with one of the Travellers named Jan. We would have saw throughout the story, the two of them begin to form a proper bond as rain falls for Jan. The Doctor meets a woman named Professor Bernice Summerfield and helps her open her way to the Heavenite Observatory and translate some writing they found to discover plus by a race known as the Hufi to use Heaven to create an army of the dead. Knowing the danger the Hufi can cause, the Doctor orders Bernice to quickly unearth the observatory, which could detect otherwise invisible Hufi spheres. And knowing that Rain's friend Jan had been infected by a fibre, the Doctor orders him to travel to the sphere. After using Brother Phaedrus of the Vacuum Church to summon a sphere to Pewter Space, the Doctor sends a message to Jan to ignite the sphere, which kills him in the process and saves Heaven. Returning for Rain, the Doctor discovers that Rain is furious with him for killing Jan. She tries to storm off, but in a storm of anger with himself, the Doctor takes her arm and drags her on board the TARDIS against her will. Bernice accidentally finds herself on board the TARDIS and has to help settle the tension between the two. After calming down a bit, Rain wishes to go home, so the Doctor sets the coordinates for her house. However, the episode ends with the TARDIS being pulled off course by an unknown entity and is sent crashing through space. The fourth episode would have been Blood Heat, written by Jim Mortimer. This would have been the final story for Julius Wahala as Rain Cunningham. The story would have been set in a parallel universe, where the events of Doctor Who and the Silurians played out differently. In this universe, the third Doctor died during the events of Doctor Who and the Silurians, and the Silurians took back control of the planet. This resulted in a war between the Silurians and humans breaking out. We would have saw the Doctor, Rain and Bernice attempting to prevent a nuclear war between the two and trying to make the two races make peace, while also working on a way to escape the universe. The story also would have saw the Doctor meeting alternative versions of the unit's family, such as the Brigadier, Benton, Liz Shaw and Joe Grant. However, a version of Joe who has lost her mind. Throughout the story, we would have saw the Doctor and Rain coming to terms with what happened the last episode and trying to fix their friendship. In the end, the Doctor's able to make peace between the two races and attempts to leave the universe. However, he soon discovers that this universe is slowly draining the life out of theirs, so the Doctor has no choice but to destroy the parallel universe to save their own. This angers Rain as she's witnessed the Doctor, her friend, wipe out an entire universe. The Doctor tries to justify his actions, but it's no use. Rain has made her mind up. She wants to go home. The Doctor takes her back to 1990, and Rain leaves, with her telling the Doctor that she hopes their paths never cross again. The story ends with the Doctor offering Bernice a chance to travel with him, and she accepts so long he vows never to manipulate another person again. The fifth episode would have been Battle of the Daleks, written by Colin Brake. This would have been the final part in the ongoing Dalek Civil War. After the supposed death of Davros, the Imperials and Renegades have agreed to stop fighting each other and focus their efforts on conquering other worlds. The story would have saw the Doctor and Bernice arriving on a human colony world and finding that the Daleks have invaded it. They work with a resistance group to find a way to stop the Daleks from creating a DNA destroying machine. And the story plays somewhat similar to the Dalek invasion of Earth. However, partway through the story, we learn that the Dalek factions are planning on betraying the other. And then around the halfway mark, the battle breaks out and the planet has turned into a battleground between the two races. The Imperial Army used the DNA machine to wipe out all renegades. And so, the Imperials win the war. Now with the renegades gone, the Imperials now focus their efforts on wiping out the planet with the DNA machine. However, the Doctor is able to reverse the output of the machine to destroy the Imperials instead. And the story ends with both Dark Factions dead. The final episode would have been the Eight Doctors. 
written by Ben Aronovich. This would have been a 30th anniversary special of Doctor Who. The main villain of the story would have been the Rani, who's trapped the first and second Doctor in the pocket universe. The eighth Doctor discovers the Rani's deed and attempts to free them. However, this sets off a trap, displacing him and his former incarnations and throwing them into different points in their timeline. The story would have been split into six mini plots where we see Doctors 3 to 8 in different points in their history. They have to find out what caused all this while dealing with whatever the other incarnation was dealing with. The third Doctor ends up in the year 2003 with Perry Brown. He must work with Winfred Bambera and Unit to stop a Cyberman invasion. The fourth Doctor finds himself stuck in the Rani's trap as he swaps places with the eighth Doctor. He must work with Benice and guide her through the Rani's TARDIS to her secondary control room where she can free him. While being guided to the control room, Benice finds some of the first and second Doctor's companions being held in stasis. These companions are Susan Foreman and Victoria Waterfield. She unfreezes them and the two of them join Benice through her travels through the TARDIS. The fifth Doctor finds himself in the past with Liz Shaw. He must work with her to prevent a Santaran from hijacking a nuclear reactor and turning the planet into a Santaran breeding ground. The Sixth Doctor finds himself on a human colony world with Sarah Jane. He must stop the nesting conscious from destroying the world with plastic humans it's grown. The Seventh Doctor finds himself in 1665 with Nyssa. He must stop the Master from releasing a virus across the Earth. The Master is defeated however part of the gas is released into the atmosphere and it results in the creation of the Great Plague. And the Eighth Doctor finds himself in Egypt in 40 BC with Ace and must stop a full on Dalek invasion. Eventually, Bernice, Susan and Victoria reach the secondary control room where they're able to free the Fourth Doctor and bring him on board. There, he's able to make contact with his other selves and unlock a time lock the Rani put on their TARDISes. Once everyone is back together and back in their right TARDIS, the Rani knows she's outnumbered. However, she still has one trick left up her sleeve and attempts to trap all the Doctors in the pocket universe. The Doctors combine their forces together to stop the Rani and instead throw her into the pocket universe while freeing the first and second Doctors. The story ends with Doctors 3 to 8 saying their farewells to one another. We see the first and second Doctors TARDISes but we don't actually see the Doctors. We just see Susan and Victoria entering them. Then after everyone says their farewells, everyone leaves to their TARDIS to return to their rightful time and places. And that would have concluded season 30 of Doctor Who. A really popular season and the first season that caught the public's interest for the first time in years. And this was the first signs of Doctor Who slowly winning back its audience. And that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll be covering season 31 of Doctor Who. Until then, thank you for watching and goodbye.